IBM is here, Apple is here, Compaq is here, Commodore is here, but this is not a computer expo. This is the annual Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. But guess what? It's a computer show anyhow. As entertainment electronics look more and more like computers, and computers look more and more like multimedia entertainment platforms. Today, we'll show you the neatest new gadgets at the Consumer Electronics Show on the special edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Shafe, and with me this week is Tim Baharin, president of Creative Strategies. Hi. Tim, what I'm playing with oh. here is this new digital book system from Franklin Electronics. Uh, it's kind of fun. They say, by the way, this is the world's first real personal digital assistant because <laughs> it's actually out there and it's a sure. product and you can buy it. Uh, it has a blank book in there in which you can write notes, a kind of notepad, but it also has other books. As you can see, I can go to uh, a book full of word games, which is kind of fun. I have a very powerful 270,000 word dictionary and thesaurus in there. There are lots of other books you can buy. The way this works, you buy these little ROM cards. Each one of these things has 45 megabytes in it. So between the two ROM cards, I've got 90 megs of information, and sure. I can read it and access it in a very simple user interface. A good example, I think, of computer technology applied to a consumer electronics product. Uh, the fact is, I would think it's good for the consumer that this computer technology and consumer electronics business is merging. Yeah, it's quite exciting for the consumer in general because all of a sudden now they're going to have access to a lot of digital information that can be at their fingertips through all of these little devices that are very inexpensive. So you don't have to be a hacker and you can still get the benefits. That's right. And it gives them a lot of choices of how they get this information and what they do with it. The other thing is exciting about this is we finally got these devices or these digital devices in appliance type metaphors. Kind of more user friendly. Absolutely. Very easy to use, real cheap, and again expands the way that they're going to be able uh -huh. to deal with all this digital information. Okay, today we will look at a variety of computer-based consumer electronics products, including the latest electronic games, the growing use of CD-ROM media, and the merging of notebook computers and palm-top organizers. To start our show, let's go back to Las Vegas and a look at one of the hottest new product categories, the Personal Digital Assistant. Apple Computer coined the term Personal Digital Assistant, or PDA, last year with the announcement of Newton. It's not on the market yet, and it wasn't even on the exhibit floor here at CES. But this type of product, a hybrid of organizer, computer, and communicator, was a hot topic here. Casio showed off its PDA by invitation only. Casio is calling its device a personal information processor. The Casio unit has a touchscreen that lets you pop up a representation of a keyboard, or you can just write on it with a pen. The Casio Personal Information Processor can save your handwriting as it is or convert it to a text file for later search and retrieval. Casio says they expect strong consumer demand for the device. You can look at it a couple of ways. The way we prefer to look at it is that um, it, will, uh, it will appeal to the people that always wanted something to organize them but didn't want to learn how to work it. They already know how to use their pen and paper and will make it uh, perform just like pen and paper except it will be a lot more powerful. On the other hand, there's a lot of people that will want to become power users and attach peripherals to it and modems and, and send it and, and receive email and do all sorts of things that uh, they'd like to expand the product and will make it appeal to those people as well. Casio promises to ship the personal information processor this summer. The price will be in the $600 range. The units will also be sold through Tandy Radio Shack stores. AT&T is also entering the PDA market with their personal communicator 440. While the Casio device was designed more like a personal organizer, the AT&T unit works more like a computer. The handheld communicator uses the Penpoint operating system from Go Corporation. There's a built-in speaker and microphone for voice annotation. There's also a built-in fax data modem. And if you want to send a fax or check your email while on the road, AT&T is offering an optional cellular phone that can be attached through the unit's communications port. The Personal Communicator 440 will be available in early summer. Prices will range between $2,000 for the basic model to up to $3,000 with all the bells and whistles. 
Sharp is also getting into the PDA game. If you already own a Wizard, sorry, Sharp's newest model, the Oz 9600, has some nice new features like pen input on its touchscreen. But unlike the Casio personal information processor, the Casio Oz 9600 also comes with a QWERTY keyboard. The Sharp unit also has a scrapbook function that lets you retain your notes in your own handwriting as a graphics file. This newest wizard is due out this summer with a suggested retail price of $649. The Panasonic KXRC100 is not quite a personal digital assistant, but it is a clever palm top gadget. This check printing accountant, acronym CPA, is an electronic check register that also prints out the checks for you, entering payee name, date, and amount on your standard bank checks. And it automatically deducts the amount of the check from your balance. The retail price on the Panasonic CPA is $350. Coming up next, the latest in multimedia and the debut of 3DO. This baby happens to have an alphanumeric keyboard oh. and a 2K memory in here. I have my Christmas shopping list in here. Look at this. I can punch up somebody's name. The greatest boon to consumer electronics has been the computer chip and the optical storage drive. From new games to interactive books to sophisticated entertainment systems, much of the attention at this consumer electronics show is on products using CDs or laser discs. One of the hottest new CD applications here at CES was 3DO, the acronym for three-dimensional optics. Trip Hawkins, who founded Electronic Arts, has put together an alliance between his own company and consumer electronics giant Mitsushita, communications giant AT&T, and the world's largest vendor of entertainment software, Time Warner. The result is a new standard for interactive multimedia. We really look forward to the, uh, the final emergence of uh, what I've talked about for a long time, which is the new Hollywood, the merging of Silicon Valley and traditional Hollywood, which you see represented on stage here today. With our filmmakers and television producers, and in fact people in talent in the, uh, in the music business, we find it possible for us to tell our stories, to develop our drama, to develop our characters, because of the graphics power. It's not just the numbers, and it's not just uh, all of these, these boxes and what they contain. It really represents a, a, a very meaningful watershed uh, for an entire software industry. And that is the software industry in Hollywood. When we saw a potential of technology at 3DO, we are very encouraged to make a significant investment in 3DO. 3DO can process images 50 times faster than a PC or a video game console, thanks to custom animation processors which run in parallel. The system can process up to 64 million pixels per second. In addition to the graphics chips, the 3DO system also includes a custom digital processor for audio, a specialized video processor, and a 32-bit RISC processor for program control. The system also uses a double-speed CD-ROM drive for fast access. The net result is a lot of computing power that gives you smoother images, cleaner scaling, and texture mapping. 3DO calls it cinematic software. You'll see a new kind of interactivity. For example, um, there, there'll be movies that are done as a linear stream just like they are now. It's a storyline that is, has a set beginning and a set end. But now you'll have, you'll begin to see what are called interactive pictures. These are stories where the storyline can change or the, 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 the perspective on how you uh, view that particular story can change. And it'll be a new form of media, just like in the beginning of motion picture, all they were doing was filming a stage play. It wasn't until later they began to understand how to use the medium of film. This is a new medium, and it'll take a couple years before people really understand how to use a new medium like this. More than 80 software companies have already agreed to publish CD programs that take advantage of the new technology. 3DO plans to charge them a royalty of $3 per disc. The system itself, which consists of the chipset plus the cinematic software tools, is being licensed at no cost to any hardware manufacturer. The first 3DO platform is due out this fall from Panasonic. The price is expected to be around $700. It's a product that's going to be in the, the main room of the house. Uh, 
where in the past you had a home office and then you had the other games in the, in the children's room. This will move into the family room and uh, everybody will participate. Though most of the talk about 3DO has been in the context of a game platform, Panasonic believes the 3DO technology will also find its way into education and business. Eventually, that definitely with the educational capabilities and with the fine quality of the performance, with the graphics, the, the, the power in the unit, and the, in, the fast, react, uh, fast interactive, it's a natural for school systems or teaching or education training, even business training, uh, visualizes programs that uh, you can have uh, sales training on a machine, on, on hands-on. 3DO wasn't the only company introducing a new CD-ROM based interactive technology. Pioneer, in cooperation with Sega and NEC, introduced their new system called Laser Active. The system includes a combination video disc and compact disc player and three optional control packs to manage this multi-platform interactive system. The Pioneer Laser Active dumps the video onto the laser disc and thus keeps all 540 megs of storage on the CD-ROM for the interactive application controller. Laser Active will offer interactive games, educational programs, and electronic publishing systems. Laser Active is due out this summer, no information yet on price. There were other major high-tech alliances at this CES. IBM teamed up with the Discovery Channel to develop a new interactive learning program called Planet Earth, The Force Within, based on documentaries from the Discovery Channel. Like the Grand Canyon, the revealing geological laboratory. Coming up next, the latest in computer games and video games. Computer games may not seem the most important part of the high-tech industry, but because of the never-ending technology demands of game hardware and software, computer games, in fact, are leading the way in this inevitable merger of consumer electronics and computers. Video game sales amounted to nearly $5 billion last year. Nintendo alone sold over $3 billion worth of game hardware and software. Sega sold close to $1.5 billion worth. So the market for video game products is huge and growing. Sega has jumped on the CD bandwagon with a new Sega CD system that plugs into a Genesis console. Sega calls it Virtual VCR, with the ability to play back compressed video using actors and movie-like game scenes. This is Echo the Dolphin, the first Sega game to use DPA, or Dynamic Play Adjustment. The software automatically determines the skill level of the player and adjusts the gameplay level according to novice, intermediate, or advanced. A company called U.S. Gold was touting CD-ROM quality without the cost of CD-ROM hardware. Flashback, The Quest for Identity is a cartridge-based game that includes 2,000 frames of animation running at 24 frames per second. Live actors were shot on film and then the artists hand illustrated the movements onto animation cells which were then converted into computer graphics. The newest innovation in game input was the activator. Sega introduced this full body controller. You stand in a ring which is equipped with infrared sensors that communicate your body movements to the game. Triax also showed off a new ergonomically designed controller for heavy duty game players. This is the TurboTouch 360 controller. No need to push down on direction buttons and risk repetitive strain injuries. With TurboTouch, you just move your fingers across the touch sensor pad to guide your game characters. The Aladdin Deck Enhancer was an innovative solution for owners of older 8-bit Nintendo game consoles. The Aladdin system dumps game control into one permanent cartridge and then puts only game-specific data on the actual game cartridge. The result is NES game cartridges for under $20. Nintendo also launched its most powerful game technology ever using the new Super FX chip. 
This is a risk processor built into each game cartridge that offers texture mapping, light source shading, object rotation and scaling, and 3D polygon animation. The SuperFX processor is a custom-made RISC processor. We spent two years in the development on it and basically developed that and the game Star Fox at the same time, so they sort of worked off of each other. Uh, it is custom, it's a custom processor which will work with the Super Nintendo and it can do many different things. Again, as I said, in this game it's used just for the 3D calculations in the polygons. It also does some uh, sprite scaling, which is taking pictures and making them bigger and smaller which before the Super FX chip was very difficult, or even impossible in most cases. Star Fox is out now. Nintendo says it expects to release a dozen more Super FX games during 1993. There are lots of new computer-based games introduced at CES. Electronic Arts announced the formation of its new division, EA Kids, to develop edutainment programs for children. One example is Peter Pan, a story painting adventure. It's part interactive cartoon, part paint box. Give me that. Video Jam is another new title from EA Kids that lets children create and play animations set to music. Both Video Jam and Peter Pan are available for the PC. Mac versions are due out soon iMotion Inc. has pushed the envelope a step farther in computer game graphics with its new 3D adventure game, Alone in the Dark. This is the first game to have real-time, full-screen animation without a CD-ROM. The game scenes offer up to nine different camera positions for viewing the action. American Laser Games showed off its new arcade-style shoot-'em-up game, Mad Dog McCree, which lets you interact with the screen by using a laser-based gun. The software is on CD-ROM. And just like in the movies, Sequels is the name of the game and software these days, LucasArts has just released Maniac Mansion 2, The Day of the Tentacle. LucasArts describes it as the world's first completely interactive cartoon. Up next, video, audio, and virtual vision. Despite all the computer goodies at this consumer electronics show, there were lots of good old-fashioned consumer electronics products on exhibit here. Noisy stereos for your car or van, telephones in every shape imaginable, and television sets for your car. New high-tech camcorders were hot items at CES. This is the Panasonic IQ VHS camcorder that has Steadicam capability built in. Sharp was guessing that amateur video buffs were getting tired of squinting at those tiny black and white viewfinders. Their new hi camcorder, the ViewCam, features a four inch color display that you hold in front of you. The ViewCam doubles as a playback monitor and features an anti-glare screen that even works outdoors in the sun. In the audio section, the hot item was the new mini disc player, miniature sized audio CDs that can play back and record. Sony says they're combining the convenience of a cassette deck with the quality of a CD. Why not develop a new music format that has the benefits of both the cassette and the CD? It has the compact size of the cassette. It's also shock resistant for music on the go, just like the cassette is. And best of all, it has both pre-recorded as well as recording capability. But like the CD, it's an optical disc as well as having instant random access. The new mini disc players offer virtual no skip shock resistance because of an LSI chip that stores up to 10 seconds of read ahead music. So even if the deck skips, it gets corrected before you actually hear that portion of the music. The mini optical disc is only two and a half inches in diameter, but holds the same amount of music as a standard size CD, up to 74 minutes. And the new mini disc technology has applications beyond just audio. Minidisc will also grow in the future to become what we like to call more multimedia oriented. There is room already on the Minidisc for text mode displays. You can see the lyrics and even the titles of certain selections and recordings. And in the future we even have the capability of using it for computer peripheral use. You can store well over 130 megabytes worth of information for data applications. It won't be cheap to be the first kid on the block with a Minidisc. 
The playback-only models from Sony and Sanyo start at around $500. The record model will be about $700. The saga of the video phone continued at CES. AT&T was again showing off the high-tech phone that lets you hear and see the person at the other end. AT&T says the video phones are growing in popularity and are now available in over 1,000 retail outlets. And what is virtual vision? It's essentially a TV set you wear on your head. These glasses weigh only five ounces, but they give you the experience of watching a widescreen TV. The unit is called the Virtual Vision Sport. The complete system includes the glasses and a belt pack that contains the TV tuner, battery, and an interface for taking output from a VCR. You can also plug a camcorder or a cable TV hookup into the Virtual Vision Sport. The system uses surface mount electronics and a special optical focusing system, so it seems like you're watching a five foot wide screen that is 15 feet in front of you. The Virtual Vision company says they're working on new versions of the device that can be used as displays for computers and video games. Up next, IBM at CES. It's getting harder and harder to tell the difference between a computer show, like Comdex, and a consumer electronics show, like this CES. Indeed, the keynote speaker at CES was the president of a computer company, IBM. Jack Keeler said the merger between the computer industry and the consumer electronics industry has already happened. In the eyes of the consumer, we're not separate industries anymore. Technology has altered our two streams, and in fact, it really to form a very powerful river. It's opened up enormous opportunity for us and those we serve. Just how well we exploit that opportunity is up to us. In fact, IBM was one of the major exhibitors here at the Consumer Electronics Show, proudly demonstrating their successful new LCD color display technology. IBM teamed up with Toshiba to develop this flat screen display, a 16-inch color panel using thin film transfer technology that can display 3D graphics. It's the industry's largest color LCD display. The screen has 100 million transistors. Its density and graphics quality are 400% better than anything seen before in a flat panel this size. And with this kind of display technology on the horizon, it's really not far-fetched to imagine an active matrix video wall in our office, in our home, in our child's classroom in the very near future. IBM was also using CES to unveil its new line of multimedia software using CD-ROM. Big Blue's new educational systems company is called EduQuest. This is one of the new CD-ROM titles called the Picture Atlas of the World. The merger of computers and television was evident from the joint announcement by IBM, NBC, and New Media Corporation of their new multimedia information service called NBC Desktop News. The service automatically reviews incoming video, text, and database information and presents a customized newscast to the user. The news is delivered in a multimedia format on your desktop computer, but the interface looks more like a typical TV newscast rundown. IBM was also bragging about its ecological credentials. This is the so-called Green Machine, a PS2 computer with a small footprint that's made completely out of recyclable materials. It has no internal fans and it consumes only 55 watts of power, less than a typical light bulb and one-fourth the energy required by a standard PC. Computer ergonomics was also in fashion at this CES with lots of computer furniture on exhibit. This is the Guzdorf ProView workstation. It's a unique design that puts the computer display underneath the desk. You view the monitor through a glare-free window built into the desk. Guzdorf says that reduces eye strain, neck pain, and fatigue. Plus, it lets you use all of your desktop. Even PC network products were on display at the Consumer Electronics Show. This is SwiftLAN a bundle of two portable network adapters and software that lets you instantly create a two-node, peer-to-peer network between any pair of PCs. The network can be connected without opening up the computer, and there is no need for an external power source. 
Finally, Telcraft Industries bragged that its new pocket faxer will get into the Guinness Book of World Records as the world's smallest fax machine. It is pocket size and weighs less than six ounces. It is a paperless fax machine. You enter your document by typing on the keyboard and then send the file as a fax through a standard phone line. The pocket faxer also doubles as a portable data terminal and electronic mailbox. The overriding theme at this consumer electronics show was that the merger of computer companies with consumer electronics companies will benefit the end user by combining the power of computer technology with the ease of use of consumer appliances. IBM's Jack Keeler called it a unique form of trickle-down technology. By combining our individual strengths, we have an opportunity together to create a world where entertainment and information is more mobile, more pervasive, more potent, more affordable, and a lot more fun. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Stuart Shafet. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Video cassette copies of this program are available. Computer Chronicles also publishes a companion newsletter containing details on products demonstrated plus background information on program topics. To order a video cassette or a subscription to the newsletter, call 1 800 366 9484 or write Computer Chronicles. Please specify program subject for tapes. All orders include a free software program for auditing software use and information on the definitive guide to keeping your organization's software legal.